Days of Our Lives is settling back into Salem with some perfectly adequate tales and one truly evil new villain, but that doesn't mean we're particularly enthused about it, and as we approach the May sweeps, it might be an issue. Where then did things go wrong? Let's talk. Over and done. So, Bo and Hope don't even have a true ending, just kind of gone is all. Maggie informing Alex that Victor was traveling to Greece for treatment was the closest thing we came to one and Bo connecting with Salem. Beautiful, but standard fare. Furthermore, I couldn't care less because Harris hid Bo for 2.5 seconds. Family Johnson moved forward. However, Chad doesn't care since he needs assistance in finding Kate, not for the same reason. Harris is just not important to me. What does he mean? That's about it so far. Kate being stranded on a fishing boat is a fun throwback to when Lauren Coslow initially assumed the role. This beyond Salem nonsense is over for me. Return to Salem immediately. Putting a band-aid on missed opportunities. I really love Chloe and Xander, as I mentioned last week, but living in together is still ridiculous. They appear to be allowing something enjoyable develop spontaneously before deciding to move in together as housemates. As opposed to that, Brady and Gwen complaining to each other was an intriguing tease, but I'm not even going to bother making assumptions about them because nobody on this show sticks around in pairings aren't being used as much as they could be. Consider Gwen and Alex. They talking openly about their emotions, grief, and loss is not how I saw this story concluding. I don't mind the unexpected emotional honesty, it's just ordinary. There was so much potential for them to get into problems with Maggie, Sander, and Titan before they broke up, and I understand that this is a part of Alex's repentance and progress. What occurred with Sander's invitation to join Maggie, to speak of Xander? It's not like he's working for the newspaper in any capacity. Other than to give Leo a column, the entire plot has been worthless. Does Lady Whistleblower discuss anyone but Leo's friends and acquaintances? He acts like one tiny bubble is the center of the world, which is worse than the gossip seekers in my kickball league. A mishandled feud. After the Kyriakis family, the Dimeras are next. This Gabby and the consultant business is absurd. If they know her background, that EJ and Stefan are at odds, and that she has ulterior goals, how can they be expected to take seriously her report to the board explaining why EJ shouldn't be co-CEO? Really? And now let's discuss each person's Demera performance. Why aren't they ever at work? It seemed more intriguing than the Demera material, with the intrigue at the Salem Hospital and the backroom maneuvering to bring Kayla back to work. But yay, Kayla is back as the go-to medical professional just in time to learn about Nicole's miraculous pregnancy. Kayla can use all of her medical knowledge at once if you implant a chip in Nicole's brain and add a secret poison to her drink. How the show will handle Camila Bonas' exit intrigues me. Since Stabby has been such a motivating factor, Gabby is mostly responsible for Lai's presence. Losing the character might cause things to become out of balance, but that might not be bad. This would open up a whole new narrative for Stefan, who has been caught in Gabby's web. It would even make the EJ slash Stefan feud worthwhile. They might also replace her. It's difficult to picture her being portrayed by anybody other than Bonas, but the show managed to do so with Abigail. A family waste. Let's discuss Colin and the TR vibes he exudes. Colin is emotionally and mentally abusive. From his, once we finish this, I can finally be happy and move on manipulation to charming, cajoling, and pressuring Talia into seducing someone she doesn't desire. Colin is not aggressive and physically abusive like Polina's tormentor. Oh. And for him to claim that he isn't pimping her out since this won't be real is to actually be doing so. Otherwise, it's setting people up. But that's an issue because we're not supposed to like him, or at least I hope not. There are only two options for him at this point. Prison or the ground because of how abhorrent he comes across. Days of our lives blew the one and only opportunity to ground Sloan and give her more lasting power by bringing someone to town. On the plus side, Sloan was the ideal candidate to inform EJ about the biscuit sex since, of course, she didn't hesitate to bring it up. Although uneasy, she didn't think much of it. It might have appeared that Sloan purposefully threw Nicole under the bus if Jessica Surfity had handled things differently. She appeared genuinely sad that she made a mistake, though. Salute to character nuance. Thanks for watching this video. 
Please subscribe to our channel, Daily Bulletin News, and stay with us.